The Shadow's Revenge by Undead Magikarp69. About three months ago, my mom took my brother and I to Smiley's for the day. You can only get one thing, she said, handing us both $20. I decided to search for a Pokemon game. Being a diehard Pokemon fan since I was four, any Pokemon game I could find was fine by me. Even a bootlegged one. But now, looking back on the events that were soon to come, I wish I had been pickier and a bit more cautious about what I wanted. After what felt like hours of searching for a game, I happened to come across a stand selling vintage video games. I spotted a Pokemon Crystal game cartridge. I picked it up and examined it closely. The cartridge had a small crack in it, and the sticker was somewhat torn, faded, and worn. How much for this? I asked. Five bucks, he said. I met up with my brother and mom, both of whom looked extremely exhausted. Sorry it took so long, I had a hard time finding anything, I said. What did you get? asked my mom. A Pokemon game, I answered. She nodded and one tired moan for my brother later, we were headed home. When I got home, I threw my stuff on the dining room table and began searching for my old GBA. The problem was, I couldn't find it. My family and I recently moved, and I hadn't really bothered unpacking except for a few of my necessities such as school books, my drawing pad, and all my chargers to various things. It wasn't in any of the boxes with my electronics, and I certainly wouldn't have just carelessly tossed such a cherished part of my childhood a random box full of stuff I was too lazy to actually pack. Mom! I called, hoping she had seen it. Have you seen my GBA? Sorry, sweetie, I haven't seen it, she replied. I'll ask Toby for his. I finally persuaded my brother to let me borrow his GBA. Sure, it cost me 20 bucks, but it was well worth it. I dashed to my room. I hopped on my bed, got settled, snatched Fire Red out of the GBA, and popped Crystal Cartridge in. The ditto forming into the Game Freak logo was fine. The Unknown were fine, too. But the silhouette of Suicune was gone. Pichu and Wooper were gone as well. The screen cut to black. The title screen finally came up. That's when I noticed that the screen was dim due to the lack of care given to the old GBA. The music was a low, distorted rumble that sounded almost like a sick, twisted laughter. Suicune wasn't running in a loop like it usually does. Instead, it was gone. The Pokemon logo was faded and ripped. The crystal behind the Pokemon logo had a huge crack in it. The crystal version logo was shattered and on the bottom of the screen. Cool, I exclaimed. I pressed start with excitement. The continue and new game options appeared as they normally do. I usually don't care about what others did before me, but this was different. This was an old used game after all. Who knows what the save file contained. I picked the continue option. A dialog box appeared. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I pressed it again. Did you not hear me? I pressed it once again. Heed my warning. I pressed it one final time. The save file information showed that the player prior to me had three gym badges, and had playtime was 0000. I found this odd. How could anyone possibly get any badges in virtually no time without cheats? I found myself in a town that I assumed to be Ecrotique City. To make sure, I exited the town and entered it again. The name didn't pop up, so all I could do was assume. I entered the Pokemon Center and spoke to Nurse Joy. After she finished healing my Pokemon, I checked my party. It was a fairly normal team. It included a level 30 Golbat, a level 28 Magnemite, a level 30 Haunter, a level 32 Sneasel, and a level 32 Feraligator. This team seemed vaguely familiar, as though I had seen it before. I exited the Pokemon Center and decided to do some exploring. I spotted a building that was boarded up and trashed. One of the kimono girls came up to me, and the sound of her sobbing could be heard coming from the speakers. It was terrible, she wailed. He was such a good gym leader, cried another kimono girl, fleeing away from the boarded up building. I quickly made my way to the building. There was an NPC which looked like one of the sages from the Ecrotique City Gym, standing near the boarded up entrance. I walked up to him and pressed A, hoping to find out what was wrong. No, no, it's dangerous here. You see, the gym leader Morty was killed by his Gengar. Morty was in a battle with the Challenger when he sent out Gengar. The Gengar was ordered to use Hypnosis, but that's not what it did. Instead, it used Shadow Ball and aimed it at Morty. It hit him and killed him. 
Gengar then killed the challenger and proceeded to get rid of the gym trainers. Fortunately, though, I escaped with my life. As the man said that, purple and red pixels were visible on his face. Before it left, it called out all its fellow haunters and ghastlies. Mine refused to go with Gengar. I could hear Gengar talking to its followers. It told them it was planning to go to the Indigo Plateau to kill the Elite Four, and it was asking if they would like to help. You have to stop them before they reach the Pokémon League, continued the old sage. A yes-no option appeared. I picked yes eagerly. This is getting really good, I thought to myself. Thank you, but before you leave, I need your trainer card. Gold handed over the trainer card. Here you go. I checked my trainer card. There were black pixels in the shape of an X on the picture of Morty. I also checked the playtime. It said 149.59. I exited at Critique City and began on my way to the Pokémon League. The routes, towns, and cities looked like desolate wastelands that were filled with corpses of both people and Pokémon. Mahogany Town was in shambles, and the Blackthorn City wasn't any better. When I entered Little Root Town, I checked my trainer card once again. The playtime was 106.54. Although I still had an abundance of time, I needed to hurry. By the time I was at Victory Road, the playtime was at 3 minutes and 1 second. I had to hurry and get through this shithole of a cave. When I was out, I checked my trainer card. It was at 005, is how much time I had left. Up ahead, I saw the sprite of a Pokémon entering the Pokémon League building. I hurried my character after it. The sprite turned around, faced me, and spoke. You fool, you came here to try to stop me, did you not? I thought so. Although you could not hear the tone, the way the words rolled onto the screen and the wording gave the dialogue a taunting mood, my character spoke. Why did you kill your own trainer, and why did you want to kill the Elite Four? My trainer was ignorant, and I got tired of his ignorance. Every day a trainer would come into the gym and easily take down my brothers and I. Morty did not deserve to be a gym leader. He did not feel the pain and regret I felt when we lost. I bet he feels the pain and regret now. It is time for you to join him. Gengar lunged towards me and a battle initiated. The battle music was the champion theme, but it was slow and distorted. Gengar's sprite wasn't pleased. It was dark and dirty, with dark red pixels on its teeth, claws. It was like a filthy murder had stained Gengar. It was when I noticed that Gengar was level zero. I sent out a level 30 Golbat. Luckily for me, it knew Bite. I selected it, but I feared Gengar went first. Gengar used Hypnosis. Golbat is fast asleep. I knew Gengar was going to use Dream Eater, so I switched out. Gold sent out Magnemite. Gengar used Hypnosis. This happened to all of my Pokémon. I checked my bag, but it was empty. No full heals, no full restores, no berries, no awakenings, no anything. Gengar used Nightmare. Magnemite's sprite turned a dark gray color and started flickering. Each time the sprite flickered, Magnemite would take more and more damage. When its HP finally dropped down to zero, the sprite would turn black, and it faded away. Instead of Magnemite's cry playing, a low-pitched laugh played. Magnemite had a nightmare. Magnemite fainted. This went on until I didn't have any Pokémon left, but the battle didn't end with my last Pokémon died. Instead, Gold Sprite entered the battle. He was level 10 and had only 1 HP, and the only move he knew was Struggle. Are you kidding me? After everything that NPC said, making Gold seem like a hero, and all he knew was how to do his struggle to death. I said, slightly irritated despite that I hesitantly chose struggle, but as expected, Gengar went first. Gengar used hypnosis. It's over for you. Gengar used nightmare. Gold sprite turned a dark gray color and started flickering just as the Pokemon sprites had. Only this time, the screen was filled with static. 
A loud, blood-curdling scream emitted from the Game Boy, and the sound forced its way into my ears. I then screamed in pain, terror, and agony. My mom and brother came running into the room. Both of them looked very concerned. What is going on in here? asked mom with a worried tone in her voice. I pointed at the Game Boy with a shaky hand. My brother looked over at his handheld with a concerned look on his face. He picked it up and read what was on the screen. There was a dialog box in the static that said, Sweet Dreams. That was The Shadow's Revenge. Final thoughts? This story fucking sucks. I'm not sure how the moderators and reviewers let this one slip by. It was just an extremely generic and lame story that we've all seen a thousand times. It's an impossibly modded cartridge from a pawn shop that does impossible things, having actual speech come through the speakers and the usual really generic crap, Pokemon always talk in that generic you ignorant fool kind of way as if they're comically evil and the whole story might as well have just been a shit episode of the cartoon. Just take out the part where he bought a game and it could easily be an awful fanfic about an episode of the cartoon. There is nothing else uniquely bad I could say about the story that wouldn't apply to at least four others that I've already read, so I'm not even gonna bother. Reviewers and moderators on my forum. I need you guys to be a lot tougher on these sorts of stories. I want to start rejecting stories for just being generic crap. We're only looking for good stories for the show, so please take every story that has potential and help the author make it as good as it possibly can be. That's it for this creepypasta. Tune in again next Saturday when we tackle yet another creepypasta written and sent in by my fans with legendary birds. If you'd like to write your own story, help peer edit, or just read the stories early, check out the description where you'll find a link to the Creepypasta section of my forum. You'll also find a link to the playlist where you can watch every Creepypasta reading I've done. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, sweet dreams.